Good morning! This video today is brought to you by my own Meshugas. Hi guys, it's Melissa here from Little Kosher Lunch. If you're new, I'm a mom to two little girls who go to a Jewish day school and I'm packing kosher style lunches for them every day. But today, I have the last pan of hamantaschen because Purim is coming up this week and today is our Purim carnival. If you have been watching me for a while and I'll link up these videos from last Purim, you know that much like childbirth, women sometimes go through really arduous things multiple times. And that's what I've done this year, which is signing up to bake all of the hamantaschen for my synagogue's bake sale and Purim carnival, something that should never be attempted, something that should never have been reattempted and yet here we are. I wanted to document while the memory is still fresh the things that were challenging for me and the things that went well for me so that if you're participating in any big baking project or bake sales maybe you can take some of these tips along with you. We've done a few things differently from last year. Last year I had maybe more trays and more flavors. This year we've just done four flavors of hamantaschen. So four flavors, prune, chocolate, cherry, apricot cinnamon, and just to make things more exciting and also to speed up the process of earning money at our bake sale, I've done some family size ones, you guys, and this Marion is thanks to you and your amazing brain. So Marion from My Jewish Mommy Life used my recipe, roll it into one giant hamantaschen. And here it is, I'm calling these family size. So if you have three kids and a bunch of cousins, you can buy one giant hamantaschen, cut it with a knife, um, this one is chocolate spread with sprinkles, which was requested by my carnival organizer for her family. I am taking to the bake sale the package that the chocolate spread came out of just in case people are concerned about ingredients or allergies. So really this video is um, for me to document for you what I learned and what I've done differently this year from say my hamantaschen tutorial or even my tips video from last year. The one major change is that I'm freezing all of my hamantaschen after forming them and before I bake them. So my hamantaschen normally take 20 minutes to bake. When I freeze them, they take 22 minutes to bake. So it's not that much time. And the result is a much more intact cookie and less overflow problems. It's okay if your cookies overflow. And I had a lot of overflow problems with my more loose jams, uh, namely the cherry jam. It has whole cherries in it and pieces of cherries, but a lot of jelly liquid. So one of the things I did is I tried to just use the fruit and any jelly in the bottom of the jar. I just skipped that and we can use that on toast. So use chunkier fruit jam, but a lot of them open. If you have a tight hamantaschen next to one that has oozed everywhere, it doesn't look good. But when you separate them like I've done over here, I'm going to show you my super jammies. Instead of wasting these or selling them as uglies, I'm going to encourage the team to sell them at full price. As you can see, I like to pack between layers of parchment. These are super jammy. And in hindsight, I overfilled these cookies. Maybe I could have frozen them for longer. And the change that I made after having this problem is that I started using the convection setting on my oven. So lots more air moving around the cookies, crispier outside faster. And, um, and really just like this jam was sort of the problem too. So it's a little bit runnier. But these are beautiful when you put them all together. They look normal. This is the super jammy one. So um, don't throw away your ugly cookies. See if you could repackage them or remarket them in a way that still is going to make you money at your bake sale. I had 52 of these open up on me. So that's like all, that's a whole batch of dough right there that I didn't want to sacrifice in hours and hours of work. Um, what other lessons can I share with you? I really wish that I had a standalone freezer because I could have made these cookies over a period of like two weeks, had them all pre-frozen and just baked, baked, baked. My limiting factor was lack of refrigerator and freezer space. I did my best and not enough cookie sheets. So thank you Alva family for your cookie sheets. We borrowed some cookie sheets from friends. I needed ones that were the size that would fit into my freezer, so that limited me. But you do what you can and we were looking on Craigslist all week for an extra freezer and it just didn't happen in time. Last I'd say, use really high quality ingredients. I've been baking cookies at school all week with the nursery school children and then I've been baking cookies all all weekend here at home. The thing that really struck me that's different from my cookies from the cookies where someone else bought the ingredients is that I used 
really great ingredients, you guys. Probably more expensive ingredients, which is not so great if you want a high profit margin, but it is great if you take pride in what you're producing. And I really take pride in what I'm making for my school and temple community. I used exclusively Bone Baman Jam, this delicious um, Israeli chocolate spread, and the Solo brand prune filling. If I had more time, I could have made my own prune filling, but I'm telling you, the Bone Baban Jam bakes up so much better or any natural jam or preserves that you might make yourself. The jams that are hot orange or hot red that have food coloring in them, they might hold together nicely, but they are not as nice of a flavor and not something that I wanna to give to my kids. My last tip for you guys, if you are hosting a bake sale where maybe it's hard for people to get to you or maybe it's in one community in one part of town and you have friends on the other side of town, I always love to spread the word on social media whenever we're having a bake sale, ask my neighbors and friends in the area. And so I take orders before I go to my bake sale event so that I can pre sell basically um, dozens of hamantaschen. For people who don't want to go like park and schlep and hassle, I try to still capture those purchases, raise that money for my community. So I feel really good packing this up, you guys. I'm going to load up the car, pull right up to that table, unload, and then come get my kids and go to the carnival. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. As always, I really relish your feedback and tips, so please leave your tips down below. I'm wishing you a really, really happy Purim, a successful carnival or bake sale if you're having one. As always, thank you so much and happy holidays.